So, I grew up on the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy, and those movies will always hold a near and dear place in my heart. I think part of it comes down to nostalgia, and the rest comes down to the fact that they were genuinely just great movies that told an unbelievable story. The story of how Peter Parker came to be Spider-Man, and all the trials and tribulations that come with that responsibility. But what if I told you that I actually prefer another Spider-Man franchise slightly more? One that, while far from perfect, took certain risks with Spider-Man that I couldn't even believe Marvel allowed. A vibrantly colorful, yet tragic and relentless take on the reality of being Spider-Man. And this almost masterclass of a movie was... Now, I think it goes without saying that I really enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man 1, but the impact that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 left on me was something that I feel is emotionally imprinted at this point, which is why I'll be focusing on this movie specifically. If you told me that the direction that a Spider-Man reboot would go would be one more akin to an indie type movie, I would call you insane and say that there's just no way that that would work. Well. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 managed to not only go in that direction, but proved me totally wrong in the process. Andrew Garfield represents such a perfect portrayal of the scatterbrained and nervous Peter Parker, and Emma Stone's character in Gwen Stacy just felt so natural and authentic, to the point where I would actually forget that these two were acting when watching the film. And in my opinion, the chemistry between these two would go on to surpass that between Peter and MJ, something I was totally not expecting. Whether it's Peter showing up late to graduation after Gwen made her speech, to the two breaking up temporarily when Peter couldn't handle the ghost of Gwen's father in pressuring him not to get her involved in Spider-Man's affairs, to the perfectly indie and cinematic ground rules date between the two that I would put up there as one of the most peak representations of authentic romance in any film ever. But I mean, <laughs> if, uh, if we're gonna be friends, I think we gotta, we gotta establish some, some ground rules. Some ground rules? Yeah, some ground rules. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like what? Uh, that, that what? Line, that line. That's off the table. That my laugh that is laugh off the is table? Off the, you, got, you gotta figure out a more annoying laugh. <laughs> That's still adorable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a ground rule. Everything felt so natural. They even managed to make Peter following Gwen around after the breakup somehow not seem weird, because Gwen understood that it was Peter's harmless way of making sure she was safe while also knowing her boundaries. And the denial, confusion, and eventual acceptance of Gwen going to England from Peter's perspective was just awesome. And Garfield shows the full range of emotion in this process, as well as Emma Stone's steadfast independence, while also struggling to let go of the thought of Peter and what they have together. We'll get back to these two, but now it's time to talk about... You need me. Yes! I need you! I need you, please! 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 please. I know what it's like to be thrown away! Please, Max! I need you! I wasn't expecting Jamie Foxx to be as goaded as Electro as he was, but really, 
he did feel like a nerdy, introverted, and off-kilter electrician who was vindicated and ostracized by the big wigs at Oscorp. And while certain points in his turn to villainy did feel a little bit forced, the movie did such a great job at making his personality more intimidating and his aura more threatening after the Times Square battle. And then we get to Harry. It's funny, when I first watched the movie, I actually had a little trouble digesting this representation of Harry Osborn, especially after James Franco's amazing portrayal. But I actually came to really like the dynamic between him and Peter, and this Harry being a much more frustrated and darker version was actually understandable due to his hatred for his father and hopelessness in the disease that he inherited. And there's no doubt in my mind that the character tendencies of this Harry probably inspired that in the Spider-Man 2 game, given both of their situations and the reactions to them. And aside from some of the best use of CGI in the epic battles between Electro and to a slight degree Goblin, I guess I also just miss when Marvel movies weren't afraid to show emotion and not have a joke or quip every two seconds. You know, I just watched the third Venom movie the other day, and while I had a great time with friends and really enjoyed my time, it truly is a movie that I'll probably never come back to or think about again. The cheesiness was toe-curlingly bad at times, and I felt myself sinking deeper and deeper into my recliner seat in certain scenes. This is a spoiler for Venom 3, so please skip ahead or bear with me for a second. Venom dying and the execution of it was actually pretty good. I was actually feeling genuine sadness while this was happening, but after all was said and done, there is just something so corporately hollow about showing a montage of Eddie and Venom after Venom dies to an extremely basic Maroon 5 song. Compare that to this and let me know what you think. It's easy to feel hopeful on a beautiful day like today. But there will be dark days ahead of us too. There will be days where you feel all alone. And that's when hope is needed most. No matter how buried it gets, or how lost you feel, you must promise me that you will hold on to hope. Keep it alive. We have to be greater than what we suffer. My wish for you is to become hope. People need that. And even if we fail, what better way is there to live? As we look around here today at all of the people who helped make us who we are, I know it feels like we're saying goodbye, but we will carry a piece of each other into everything that we do next to remind us of who we are and of who we're meant to be. I've had a great four years with you. I'll miss you all very much. How the hell did this happen in a Marvel movie? I remember watching this scene back in college and not being able to get it out of my mind for a week. I couldn't believe that this happened in a Spider-Man movie, but for some reason I absolutely loved it. Him reaching out a hand of web to almost save Gwen, just to have her neck snap back and hit her head on the floor in just being too late, was so tragically perfect. And the acting of Garfield after is something you simply don't get anymore in Marvel movies. Hey. Good. Hey. Breathe. Hey. Stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me, stay with me. You stay with me. When 
Gwen. No, please, please. And to top it all off, how do you do a montage? You put Gwen's graduation speech of hope over the memories that the two had while Peter becomes inspired to get back on his feet as Spider-Man. That's how you do it! Ugh. All in all, I want Marvel and superhero movies to take emotional risks again. You don't have to be super gritty and dark like Batman, but you can indeed strike that balance. And in my opinion, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and the whole franchise did it better than any Marvel movie out today. If it were up to me, I would have loved if the franchise continued, but I also understand the writing flaws in the movies, so I'm not that mad. Tom Holland has done a great job. The movies still suffer a little bit from the Disney Channel dialogue, but No Way Home actually solved a lot of those issues and was by far the best in Holland's trilogy. At the end of the day, I want to send this video out to the algorithm as a love letter to my goats, Andrew Garfield, and Emma Stone and Mark Webb. You guys truly did an amazing job with this movie, and I'm so sad that it kind of got overhated and underrated at the time it came out. But I think people nowadays are starting to appreciate it a lot more, similar to Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Thank you. And Marvel, take notes on the peak that is The Amazing Spider-Man 2.